This is Rain. I, uh, I dubbed this a Cathedral of the Sun. You see the clouds above my head. I would love to play with any one of my ancestors as children. I want to preserve the purity of childhood. It's a, a very sappy way to state the purpose of my life. I'm going to put this down and the sun is out and we're going to wrap. Just come out of, I'm still inside really, this massive forest, Provincial Park. And if you're into rapping about childhood and childhood fancy and childhood vigor and hope and thought and dreaming and play and sadness, then stick around. I dare say you recommend your intelligence. A nice place. Light the sacred plant under the sacred sun with the sacred fire by the sacred wood. Actually working some fluid out of my lungs. Or rather, my lungs are learning to work fluid out of them. Not something any regular doctor would have diagnosed. For the persistent cough that I've I've had off and on here and there. I like the fire of the sun. I like the white floating clouds I always have. Isn't set enough that sun and clouds and the sounds of birds and a sacred forest are a pretty special thing to find oneself in and among or underneath. In the care of. at the mercy of. What else can we? What else can we say? I spent some nice times with my father in uh, some provincial campgrounds, you know. So those are good memories. You know, when the sun itself doesn't want to get to know you, it throws you back. It throws you back a little bit. And the common dimension of the genius with which uh, I grew and that I displayed as I got older, not to anyone in particular and certainly not to myself, but uh, that's a, you know, at some point I had to acknowledge a kind of genius, if only because it was the only way to explain. There are others, less flattering ways to explain. I'm being perfectly honest. 
why it seemed like none of my family and no one around me ever seemed to want to talk about the things that I was most interested in. Philosophically, religiously, personally, emotionally, mentally, you name it. They just didn't seem to think that much. If the people around you aren't thinking a lot about the most critical decisions of their lives, that puts you in a difficult position. One, you have a lot of intelligence because it's a common problem that most people learn to ignore by the time they even learn anything. And two, because that intelligence that you retain is going to be a liability for the rest of your life. Especially if you already have trouble socializing. Right? Because you see people coming a mile away. Right? I, I can see people coming a mile away. Can't we all? I always assume people can see me coming. <laughs> you know? And uh, some certainly feels like some people can see me coming. I don't uh, have the energy to figure out why everyone's mind is the way it is, but there are a lot of people uh, who, in my mind, are actively looking for ways to suck energy from me. Um, you know, like vampires, but just needy organisms. And they have something to share. Maybe it's an unsavory element about all human society. Maybe we all want something from each other. Maybe I'm sucking the life right out of you right now. Maybe you're sitting there going, what the fuck is this guy talking about? I guess as I improve in what I consider my medical education, I'm, I'm finding myself more inclined to want to consider how much of life at every level is engaged in septic and antiseptic functions. It's trying to get something, it's trying to eat something, or it's trying to work with other things to eat things. And to stand upright, to, to, to continue to live, to continue to have a purpose, to continue to exercise the full range of one's instincts, one's aptitudes, one's feelings. A lot of people talk about respecting people's feelings, but I don't meet a lot of people who really do. And in my life, I've met a lot of psychopaths. So if a psychopath sees that you're getting into a lot of emotion, um, they're very much inclined to want to change the subject. Because either because it makes it emotion them emotional or because it doesn't. Uh, because they can't have their emotions if it is provoking them in an emotional sense while you're having your emotions. On the flip side, of course, the more emotional you are, the more it can tell them about how to manipulate you. And uh, as a kind of um, symbiotic offshoot of their ability to repress their emotions so much that they don't even suffer themselves to feel anxious about, much less sympathize with, in any but the most affected manner, the emotions of other people. And it's anyone's guess, of course, how much anyone really feels what we feel in any given time. When I come to places like this, I give myself liberty to feel a lot, to think a lot, take what space that I can. It takes a little effort because um, I'm stoned and in a public place, and for the most part, you're okay, but you can have people walk up on you. They usually make a little bit of noise, but they don't always. I have to look around a little bit. Sometimes it's just your instincts alerting you to, to be a little more alert. The threshold for any given human mind between how relaxed and alert it can be and how relaxed or alert it has rarely been able to be can bring up an enormous range of emotion for the human mind.
I have find, found in my life that there always has to be time to feel things. And I'm just saying that because I think a lot of people might have different opinions about that, but in my, in my life, there has to be a lot of time and a lot of ways to help me feel things. Or to a place to direct my feelings. I direct them at a ubiquitous nature. Um, I feel them coursing through my limbs. I feel them in the nerves of my body. It feels like taking a shower. It could be pleasurable, it could be cold, it can be thrilling, it can be numbing. Um, I'm convinced that human emotion provides uh, a substance considerable amount of the substance of the whole circulatory system of the celestial biology of the earth, including the stories that live, like the trees live on this ground upon the feelings of our lives. They grow from the fertile territory of the very depths of the deepest human sorrow, the deepest human oblivion, the deepest human anger, the deepest human love. Love without the voice of your flesh and blood uh, is like an what? I don't even know what I could compare that to. So I hope there's a certain sense of authenticity about how I'm addressing subjects that, I don't know about you, but I've had difficulty trying to understand or be able to talk about and certainly to be able to assert in a way that feels right for me. Um, as probably the only and best authority on how I actually feel and what life actually means to me. And I don't want to use, necessarily use a religion uh, in order to do that, and I don't want to necessarily have to have anything but uh, maybe a little marijuana and a public park that I can go and walk in with some food. And, and uh, I've carried journals around for many years of my life, and then the camera has become um, its own kind of recording device. So I make, I make public, in a sense, a public offering of a reflection of how I'm going about the business of improving my ability to think, uh, my ability to enjoy, really, really take the greatest possible pleasure in all of that constitutes the current of life. And uh, I get no end of joy and humility in attempting to do that. And. I've learned to feel a little more confident criticizing how all the other systems of the world ostensibly attempt to do that for us or to help us do it ourselves, you name it. Um, if you want to step into the spiritual world, you know, it's all very confusing to me how everyone seems to be going about the business of, of getting the most out of life because um, for all kinds of reasons I don't really agree with what they're doing. And I, when I've gotten to know them much more closely, it doesn't seem like they're doing anything that they think that they say that they're doing. So, um, I go my own way in, in just about every respect. Perhaps that's something to make a video about another time.